Hey there, welcome to the garden. I am so sorry for being away for so long. I am finally back out and really getting into the garden, just in time for the garden season to really start. There are starting to be buds on the clematis and all the flowers are starting to bloom. So after kind of a crazy month and a few mishaps with some seedlings, we are getting started and the garden is finally set up. So now that the weather has started to take a turn and it's getting a little bit warmer, we've had quite a lot of rain, more things are really growing. And um, I wanna just show you where the garden is right now, the raised beds and all of it. So I am going to cut to a little footage from a couple days ago and just take you through the garden status, where we are at the moment and give you a feel for how it's looking. Hey there, welcome back to the garden. It has been so long, I am so sorry. Getting close to April now, I am ready to get back out here. I wanted to share with you the status of the garden, what I've got set up because we have raised beds now. I've done a little bit of planting. There have been a few mishaps too, but I'm gonna share all of it. So let's start with the raised beds because these are what I am most excited about. I found these really awesome troughs and they're, they are what we're gonna be using as raised beds this year, or at least some of what we're gonna so be using. So these are six foot long by two feet wide and a real nice sturdy um, container. One of the things I love about it is that it's fully contained. So this is like a water, well, can be a watertight um, trough. I do have drainage right there um, that I, I just put the soil in, so I haven't even taken out the drainage plug yet. Uh, but it can be, it can have drainage, um, so not to worry about that. And it is nice and deep. Now, this is a temporary gardening space for me. I'm only going to be here for the year, so I ended up deciding to just fill the uh, raised beds up halfway with soil. Basically, just because it's such an expense to buy soil and this is a great you know this is a great soil reservoir if you were doing long-term container gardening it's really nice because you have so much space for soil i don't think that even like with the six inches of soil and the nice space in these garden beds i think it's going to be totally fine for one year i don't think the plants are going to like use up all the nutrients in the soil i think we should be pretty good and yeah i just didn't honestly didn't want to buy all of that potting soil that's one thing like when you get into raised bed gardening all of a sudden you realize how expensive it is to fill a raised bed and with one this height this is two feet tall that ends up adding up quickly one thing i am excited about is that when i move to my next garden so next year we're going to be moving back to virginia and i am planning to use these troughs as uh, trough ponds so you can make really cool container ponds with water troughs um, you may have seen some of those in different people's gardens I've always loved it and I'm gonna be repurposing these as ponds but for now they're just gonna be raised beds and I just filled them up with a container raised bed mix so you can get specific raised bed soil um, and then you can also get obviously like container soil and the container soil is just to, meant to be even more dry Raining. It has usually um, some vermiculite in it and it's going to have better drainage than like garden soil. This is a raised bed slash container mix soil, um, organic, and I thought that would just be good because given that these are fully contained raised beds, I'll just make it um, probably a little bit happier for the plants. They'll get enough air and everything on their roots. Okay, so now let's talk about what I'm going plant in these raised beds. Pretty excited about that. But I did have some major issues with my seedlings, which part of the reason I kind of just like <laughs> took a little break from gardening for the last few weeks. So 
I had a bunch of beautiful seedlings started. I was actually doing a really good job, like staying on top of them. I had them all inside under grow lights. And then I sort of moved them outside because I thought like, I'm just gonna move them out, start hardening off the process. And I, I, I just, I lost track. Like to be honest, I just lost track of them. I just totally dropped the ball. They all basically died. Um, I've obviously put the soil back into these raised beds but I, you know, I'm out some of those seeds, which is definitely a little bit of a waste. I feel kind of badly <laughs> about letting them all go, but I went to the garden center this weekend and got a few seedlings. When in doubt, you know, there's always seedlings available. So especially this time of year, if, if you mess up your seedlings or just, just dr drop the ball like I did, you can always get more. So I found a couple um, tomatoes. We're gonna have a pretty tomato heavy garden this year because those are some of the only seedlings that survived. I have a few mystery tomatoes that I I wrote tags for, but they wore off. So I don't even know what the, what those are. So I have a couple mystery tomatoes I'm gonna plant in this raised bed. And then I have um, a couple that I got from the garden center. This one is a sun gold. If you want like a, just a really nice producing cherry tomato, you've probably heard of sun golds before. They're just a real classic yellow cherry tomato. They're highly productive. They're a very healthy plant. I think it was like one of the first tomato plants that I ever grew successfully was a sun gold. So I figured since we've already started this season off, not in the best shape, might as well go with that. And then I also got a black from Tula, which was the description at the nursery was like the ugliest and best tasting tomato you've ever so had. So I thought that would be pretty intriguing. And I wanted something that was like a little bit more of a, um, like a, like a tomato sandwich style. So it's a Russian heirloom. Yeah, possibly the ugliest and most delicious tomato rich flavor, um, three to four inch slightly flattened fruits, three to four foot tall plants. It's indeterminate, so it'll keep growing. And I may end up putting a garden arch in this garden as well. I've got actually two of these raised beds. So I think another tomato arch may be, uh, may be needed. Let me step back and you can see what we've got going on here. A few containers, a little bit of a mess. It's just, where we're at with the garden right now. In this uh, raised bed over here, I've got a few different things. Some more mystery tomatoes that hopefully will grow up a trellis soon. This is actually a, a willow. Um, I had a little pussy willow plant inside, just like in a, in a pot, uh, just sticks from Trader Joe's and it rooted. So I, I stuck it in the raised bed we'll see how that grows. And then we have some Purple Majesty Millet, some Bishop's Flower, which will be a really pretty like Queen Anne's Lace looking flower. That should be gorgeous and very whimsical. And then some Black Knight uh, Pin Cushion Flowers, Scabiosa, so that'll be good. This is actually a Tumbler tomato. So this is a determinate style tomato. It will um, stay just like a couple feet tall. I'm hoping it'll reach the top of the raised bed. I'm not entirely sure. And then over here we have this really cool thistle and I gotta remember the, the name for it, um, but it's growing very happily. And a Cosmos. And um, I think this is actually a little Angelonia. And then some more pink cushion flowers that are looking really healthy and good. And a few scallions. So it doesn't look like much right now, but I'm hoping in, in you know, in a couple have a months. Really beautiful sort of whimsical looking garden with the pink cushion flowers and the bishop flower and the millet and everything. Hopefully it'll be pretty. My plan is to sort of fill in the edges around where basically where I've messed up and have holes now because I've lost all my seedlings with a lot of things that I can direct sow. So I'm going to probably get into doing some direct sowing pretty soon and maybe like direct sow some zinnias. I feel like zinnias are always some of the best. If you have I don't know <laughs> if you have an empty spot mid season, if you've got a little bit of a mess in the garden, if you know, things are a little crazy. If you're like me and you're just sort of letting things happen at will, um, just throwing in a few zinnia seeds, they're going to look beautiful. Um, they're going to grow up and be gorgeous. And so, you know, just always a good thing. So I'll probably pull out some zinnias and I do have some space over in these raised beds. 
So, you know, I could put some more flowers in here. I am also thinking I have a nice big open space in front of these raised beds. I may get a couple either like big grow bags or even they make like a raised bed basically grow bag. So maybe like a two by four grow bag where I can do some squash and zinnias, which are all direct sown. So I don't have to worry about, um, you know, starting any more seedlings or even buying any more seedlings. I can just get some of those direct sown things. And I think that's where I'm gonna focus most of my energy now. Uh, we are well past our last frost here. I am now in a zone 10, I think. <laughs> Something crazy, but there's no frost. It's still a little chilly though. Um, definitely not like that high heat that you want maybe for peppers. Uh, but pretty soon I think we can, and they, like squash, I think we can probably start sowing pretty soon. It's in like the 60s and 70s during the day and maybe like 50s at night. So we're right there. Um, other things that are going on in the garden right now are just really um, some of the containers kind of growing. I'm still really enjoying these lettuce and um, viola containers. They have been so fun. Not only have we been eating a lot of salads from them, but they're beautiful. And just really, I've been enjoying looking out of them. I can also see over here this little collection of containers uh, from my window. And so I've been enjoying looking at this. I threw some parsley in here and then we've got some really pretty apricot nasturtiums. Uh, this is a nice rose, princess margarita rose, some Stillwater's clematis, which look at that. We're getting a bud on there. The arugula is growing up nicely. And then I actually have, this is gonna get nice and big and, and really pretty. This is some Dusty Miller that I started from seed. So not all of my seedlings died. These guys are, are looking good and some more Cosmos here. So I think I can fill in a few more containers. You can see I've got an empty one there. A few more containers in this area and really kind of um, have a fun little gardening space here. And then we've got more space here to do some things. This is gonna be my next container, which I will share with you soon. But yeah, that's the status of the garden. My garden before was really small, but this feels even more tiny. But at least there's stuff growing. There's stuff growing. And I think if I can get a few tomato plants and a few herbs and a cup, maybe, you know, a pepper or two, it'll tide me over um, until I get on to my next, like, bigger garden. Oh, which reminds me, I do have a pepper. I did pick up a giant Marconi sweet pepper. And that's going to go in this raised bed, too. This is going to be kind of my pepper and tomato raised bed over here. You know what? Let's go ahead and get all these tomatoes planted so at least I can say I did did something out in the garden today all right I know the sun gold and um, the black from Tula are gonna be big tall indeterminate tomatoes so I want to put them over here all right, I'm just gonna plant them by the edge I'm gonna push well, the spacing, I'm basically sort of going to opt for like one foot, maybe half a foot per plant. I'm not really going to give them know, a ton of spacing. I tend to kind of push the spacing limits, especially in a raised bed situation like this, because I just want to make the most out of it. Um, but I'm going to put all the, the tomatoes over here so that even if they all grow up and kind of grow together, then when I get the um, trellis set up, they can kind of lean off into that trellis and I think it should work. And I just, yeah, as you can see, I don't fuss too much about planting them. Just get them all in the ground. I'll come back in and water. And then I'm gonna spread this out. We'll probably do some flowers and stuff in the middle. So I'll come over and plant this um, Marconi pepper over here. Put it right here. Perfect.
will say that <laughs> the half-filled raised beds are not ideal. It's not something I would do as a recommendation. It's sort of, I'm doing it as like um, basically a necessity, but uh, definitely not recommended. I'm not entirely sure yet how it's going to affect um, the growth of the plant. You know, they don't get as perfect consistent watering or sunlight because of these high sides. Hopefully like the things like the tomatoes and the peppers, they do get direct sun during the day and hopefully they'll get enough that they'll just like grow up above that rim. Um, but obviously it affects like you can't do a shorter porter plant around the edge of the raised bed and it's kind of, yeah, it's just less than ideal. I'm not, um, I definitely am not, just want to make sure <laughs> that I'm not like recommending that, but it's just what I'm going to do this year. Again, it just makes the most sense. But I got everything watered in. Feels good to be back out in the garden. Um, it's, <laughs> it's just been a crazy, a crazy month. And um, I think that just happens, but we're doing it now. The tomatoes are planted. So that is great. Thank you so much for watching. And I will talk to you again soon. I've got a tomato and flower container that I'm going to get planted up in a few days here. So talk to you again soon. Bye.